And so uh, last night, the most <laughs> this is one of those things where we're going to start at the end and then go back to the beginning. Um, Memento. <laughs> just like <laughs> Memento. <laughs> when I was a kid, I looked into the sun. Um, <laughs> but uh, my girlfriend was over, and uh, she had driven her car, I'd driven my car, and then I was in... Uh, the garage for a minute talking to one of my neighbors because we both pulled up at the same time and then I came in the house and I was using the bathroom and she texted me and she goes somebody's knocking on the door and I said weird I, I didn't hear anything you know and at first my brain goes oh it must be my neighbor because um, we're close but like I don't have like her phone number or anything like that but like she knows she can knock on my door if she ever needs anything and um, I was like that's not like Donna to knock like that I was like it's she would bring the doorbell you know or she would be at the front door yeah because she texted me and I was like is Do you live in an apartment complex just or so it's it not a complex it's like four units that kind of make like a U shape like this so like okay. there's one two three and I'm in four okay so I can't say if anything ever happens in any of these three apartments but like it wouldn't surprise me if something did yeah just because of how much is happening in this apartment oh I'm sure over here um but so I'm th so I'm like, well, that's not like her. She would ring the doorbell and she would come to the front door. She's never come to the back door of the apartment before, you know. And I came out of the bathroom and my girlfriend looked like freaked out. Like she was like kind of on the couch, just like kind of like sitting in the corner of it. And she was like, I heard a knock, but it wasn't a knock. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, you know, that doesn't make sense. You're like, cool. What's that? Well, mean? and so like, I mean, I'm sure you guys know as like a man, like your first instinct in that situation is like be defensive, be protective, and you like you like need information to process that, and you're like, what? And so she's like, I heard a knock, but it didn't sound like a knock. And I'm like, what do you mean it didn't sound like a knock? She's like, I heard a knock, but I don't think it was someone knocking on the door, but it was trying to make a sound like it was knocking on the door. Ooh, that's great. Oh, that's really great. Well, and the first thing my brain my brain went to was like something's trying to get in. So no wants entry. Well, because that's it. You and I'm. I'm going to say this as a cautionary tale to anybody listening to the show right now. If you are dabbling into the arts, if you are bringing any type of grimoire or text into your home or anything like that, you are pretty much automatically opening yourself up for any type of crazy shit that's going to happen to you. Fair enough. And I say that entirely because I have a copy of the Lesser Key of Solomon in my house. What? Which is a uh, Goetica. It's a grimoire. Yeah, I know. I know exactly. So what you're it familiar is. with it. Oh, very you familiar, familiar with this. I'm not. No. So the Lesser Key of Solomon is a collective of uh, basically demons. It's 66 demons. It's a spell book. Oh, it's a spell book. Yeah, I you, learned about this recently. So there's lots of he, he buried them so no one could access them, right? And well, it's, it's nothing to do with the actual Solomon. That's a that's a myth. It's a different Solomon. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, it, well, it was just called the Lesser Key of Solomon because like that's just the way the name has been translated as it's been passed down. But basically. It's, uh, it's like a Pokedex for demons is a good way to look at it because basically it has all their sigils. It has all of their, um, like, all the information about it. How the, to summon them. How to summon them and stuff like that. And so that's what I was messing with. Oh, my God. Adam. Yeah, I know, like, right? I can't figure out why there's anything weird happening in my house. <laughs> well, and so, well, because uh, what's the best way I can put it? <laughs> I don't know. I want to hear it. I want to hear the best way you could put this. I also want to I want to preface this by I want to say I want anybody listening to this who is if anybody's going through something really hard and they don't feel like there's a way out and I don't mean like suicide I mean like they're looking towards like they feel very spiritually lost like something is spiritually affecting them yeah and they feel like their current path isn't serving them I am like this is this is consider this a cautionary tale for that <laughs> going forward all right I love it so. I mean, I would say now, you know, I have a very strong belief in God and stuff like that, you know, and that's that's really been more rekindled, I would say, more within the last couple of years, more than anything. And I think a lot of that came from a lot of the fallout of messing with the Lesser Key of Solomon, my because goodness. the way it came into my hands, I didn't buy it. It was given to me. Um, well, actually, it was offered to me because that's how the, that's, that's how the universe does these kind of things. It doesn't. It's yeah, gonna, yeah, it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna give you a choice. It's not gonna just like directly fuck with you and like put it in your lap. Like it's gonna give you a choice whether you want to mess with it or not. Yeah. Do you want it? Yes, has been invited in. Right. Just like the knock the other night. Okay. You know, and so um, I was at a friend's house and uh, they had a roommate that was living, staying with them at the time, and uh, he knows that I was, you know, I've always been into the kind of the, the weird and the paranormal and stuff like that. And he comes downstairs, and he doesn't even say anything. He just goes, "Hey, do you want this?" And I was like, what is it? He goes, I just don't want it anymore. 
and he just gave it to me and like he I was like what is he goes oh it's just a lesser key of Solomon oh it's just it's just the lesser key of Solomon <laughs> not a big deal like oh it's just one of the 14 Gutenberg Bibles I came across at a goodwill you know right <laughs> it's fine um but so I'm like why do you have this he was and um my friend was like yeah apparently he got it and uh he was like just kind of interested in it just like seeing what it was all about because he'd like heard about it and so like he got a copy of it and uh, he had had such terrible nightmares ever since bringing it into the house that he just wanted to get rid of it. So he never even used it. He never even used it for anything practical. He just kind of, like, read through it and flipped through it and, like, was having the worst nightmares of his life. I, I believe it. To the point that he wanted to get rid of the book. I mean, it makes sense. Well, And it does make sense. Have Be you seen Hereditary? Yeah, and, well, Pyman Seal is in The Lesser yeah. Key of yeah, Solomon. Yeah, it's literally, like, I listened to, uh, Sorry, I think I've talked about this before, but, like, he... The, the like rituals and all the stuff from oh, no, it. that's it's from the, it's direct that's like directly he got it from direct it. from the lesser key of Solomon. Well and that's what He's piqued like, hey, my let's interest. Make a movie. Well oh, God. Sorry. Um but that is um that's kind of what got me into it because I was super into hereditary when it came out because I remember me and because I've always been in scary movies. Sure. And I remember uh, me and a friend we used to just go to a movie once a week. Like that was our thing. Like we'd hang out, smoke weed and go to the movies. And so we were like, oh, Hereditary, never heard of this. And then I proceeded to watch the scariest movie I'd seen in like a decade, you know? I've never seen it, and I don't want to see it. I, I mean, okay, there's a morbid curiosity. It's it's morbid, and it's terrifying, and if I, like I said, it's probably one of, if not the scariest movie I've seen in the last decade. Jeez. Just going, just going into it blind, not knowing what it's about, and then just watching it, you're just like, wow. As soon as I heard what he used as like a reference material, I was like, Really? Well, and f- fun fact about Ari Aster, if I can do a little self brag for a moment, I dated a girl whose sister was one of his roommates in college. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and that I remember I started dating this girl, and I was like, "Oh, dude, like Hereditary and Midsummer, like I love those movies so much; they're so good." And she's like, "Oh yeah, I know Ari; he's a nice guy." And I'm like, "What?" She's like, "Yeah, Ari is my sister's roommate in college." Blah blah blah. And then I was like, "No, this can't be true." And then I met her sister, and she's like, "Oh yeah, Ari," and like called him and was just like, "Hey, what's up?" And he's like, "Nothing. How's it going?" And she's like, "Oh, nothing." Just wanted to say hi, bye. Like, didn't even let me talk to him. You're just like, like, I love your movie. Well, and then uh, he, th- this is one of my, bi- you know how you have, like, th- like little things about breakups that yeah, just always mess sure, with you? Sure, sure. He drew, like, a decapitated head that said hi, Adam, when they were, like, hanging out at a party one time, and I was supposed to get it for a Christmas present, but me and that girl broke up before then, so I never got the drawing. You never got it? Yeah, I had a hand-drawn Ari Aster that I was going to hang up in my house. <laughs> oh, man. Well... You got the lesser key of something. You probably don't need that too. <laughs> yeah, you know, like let's, you know, what's the difference at the end of the day? Which we keep adding them up. You're like, um, well, but but so he really leans heavily into King Pyman in that movie, who yeah. is a, uh, if anybody's unfamiliar with that particular demon, he is a demon that brings about a lot of like wealth and good fortune, and basically makes you like endlessly rich on Earth, and he looks like a man riding a camel, and he's supposed to have a procession of like a hundred something demons and like a large band that comes before him so it's just like this cacophonous noise whenever you hear him come okay like it's that's the way that they describe the stuff in the grimoire like it's all these like very like dramatic tellings and stuff like that but you have to realize this was like medieval monks communing with demons writing down what these things are and then like you know Was, was it written in like the 1500s it's not as old as people make it sound it's not as old as people make it sound but it's old enough to the yeah. point where it's like there was definitely some worldly knowledge that we lost between then and now that these men were able to transcribe so you got the book in your house what so i happened? got the book in my house and you know me at this point i'm like anything is everything and let's just take all kinds of influences and we're not anything particular we're just gonna mess with everything and see what happens you know nothing can happen. so let's mess with all the good stuff and let's mess with all the bad stuff and see what happens you know basically i didn't learn anything from my dad's stories when i was a kid <laughs> <laughs> um check adam's last episode for that story oh yeah the, that, that's a great part about two and a part two is you got to make him go back and listen to the part yeah, one with all the references listen to this it's a canon event. It's lore at that yeah. point, you know? Mm-hmm. That's a two-parter. Um, but so th- the I, <laughs> being a genius that I am, decided I was going to do a ritual one night because I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go ahead and see what happens, you know? So I decided who's the one I'm most familiar with? Paimon. So I'm Wonderful. like, so I went, at, so I like took like wood ash and like drew the sigil on the wall and like drew it on the floor and did like the whole thing and everything like that and like followed the book like to a T and again going forward this is all a warning like this is like this is not me endorsing any of this behavior or any of this at all this is me saying like don't do this stuff yeah um they say that you know 
a lot of times, you know, when people talk about the voice of God, people automatically think like, oh, it's a voice that you hear in your head. But no, it's more of like a, a movement that you feel within yourself. Like it's suddenly a thought that comes in. It's a feeling. It's an overwhelming feeling that you get that you can't deny. A quiet whisper. Speaking to demons is very similar because you have to realize these are two extremes that are working in the same plane. So it's more something that you like feel and sense and kind of like absorb and interpret more so than it is something that where it's like it's just a voice you know you're not going to summon a demon and then it's going to be like this and like talking it into your ear or something like that you know it's gonna yeah now there's people who have said that like you know they've um you know communed with a specific demon so many times and like you know done dmt to get there that like they've been able to actually like visualize the same entity over and over again and so you know that's it's very real stuff, you know, like horror movies and Hollywood and, and stuff like this, you know, it kind of glamorizes it a little bit, but like, it's very real, very evil, very scary stuff. Yeah. No, and I, you I, immediately I start to, <clears throat> to see the ramifications from it once you dip your toes into the water, because immediately once you call something in, you have to do a binding ceremony for it. And they always talk about that in movies, how you don't say goodbye on the Ouija board and bad stuff happens. It's a billion percent true. And even with a strong binding ceremony, if you're not, if your will is not strong enough against the demon's will, then guess what? It's already here and it's going to do whatever it wants. So the first sign that I knew something was wrong was when, uh, I don't know what it was. I looked it up and I don't know if it was like what the exact bug was, but it was, it was like a black hornet this big and it was just dead in my basement. A dead hornet? A huge dead hornet in the middle okay. of winter. Okay. Because uh, since my basement isn't finished, uh, me and my brother were playing some drinking games down there. And uh, I went to move and I went to move something kind of around the area where I'd done the ritual downstairs. And there was just like this, I, I, like I shit you not, like the size of my finger to my thumb right there, just a huge black hornet just dead laying on the floor. Like wing, like wing, like that thing would have had to be like, yeah. like you would have heard it, you know? Like a hummingbird. Like, essentially, like, you would have had to hear it in your house and stuff like that. And me and my brother are like, what the fuck? And so, like, you know, there's actually an app you can download where you can scan a picture of a bug and it'll, like, search the internet to, like, try to find what the bug is. And this is some kind of bug that's from, like, Arkansas. Like, it's just like a wasp that only comes around in the summer and it's like a mud dauber kind of thing. Like, it, like, thrives in the mud. And it's just, like, a super, like, it sucks when it stings you. It's one of those things that hurts for, like, hours and hours on end and stuff like that. And it's, there's just a, a huge single dead one in my basement after that. And so I'm, so I start looking into this and there's a lot to be said with the animal world and the spiritual world okay. that are closer tied together. And a lot of times if you have, I mean, you see it with dogs and cats, if you have erratic spiritual activity, the animals react to it more so than humans can. And it's believed it's because either they can see things that we don't understand, like either like just straight visually or they just have a closer touch to the spiritual world than we do. Um, and so animals are very easily manipulated by spirits as well. Um, and one of the things that a lot of spirits will do to um, like mock you in a way is kind of like do like little things that like we talked about how like, you know, when the demon talks to you like or the spirit talks to you, like it's. It's more of like a thought or like an inference that suddenly comes yeah. in. Yeah, no, I've, and I've, so I've like, heard a few demon voices in my day. Well, and so like, I suddenly see this bug, and like my brain is just automatically like, "That's from Pyman." I was like, "This is from something." I was like, "This is directly because of what I was doing down here in the basement." Because how else do you explain a bug out of season in my basement in the wrong part of the country? Right. Well, and it's like you've i've i've heard stories of people that suddenly mess with this stuff and there are just there's just ants everywhere there's ants at their work there's ants at their home there's ants in their bed there's just ants everywhere there's crickets there's grasshoppers there's frogs in the yard there's mice there's rats there's a lot of these like what you would consider like plague animals or like pestilence animals that are very easily controlled because a lot of demons work in legions they work in groups they work in sex so i think it's very easy for them in this because they're still bound by the laws of this reality yeah and so i think that it's very easy for them to manipulate what we would consider like a lesser being like a hive mind sure no i actually i know exactly i had an experience Mm -hmm. like that but with earwigs right and so it's like they're disgusting they're horribly disgusting i know somebody who has a weird affinity for earwigs because he worked in like food safety for years and he had to like learn about them all the time. He's like, they're actually very good parents. I'm like, I don't care. They're disgusting, and I yeah. don't want them around me. 
I got bit by one once. It was horrible. Yeah, they don't feel good. No. And like, just, anyway. uh, yeah, let's get off earwigs. That could be yeah. a whole show. <laughs> that could be a whole show, just earwigs. Just, just talking about bugs and creepy crawlies. Um, and honestly, the last couple years of my life after I started messing with that stuff and have the book in my home were not good because I went through like a really horrible like breakup that like shattered me. I broke my pelvis. I had a heart transplant. Like my heart failed. Oh my gosh. You know? So it's like, there's definitely a correlation between like bringing this book into my home, messing with some of the things that are inside of it. And then suddenly I have like the worst three years of my life. For the record, it's still in your house. It is still in my house, but um, I was actually looking at it today because I was like, I want to bring this up on the show, and I didn't even open it because there was something. Because like you know, I've kind of like me and me and God have kind of got a better connection yeah. now these days than we did back then, and like there was just something in my spirit that was like, don't open that book again. Like mm-hmm. it's closed, it's been on the bookshelf. Do not open that. Yeah. Because there was a piece of me because like and. Like, this is how this stuff works. Because, like, I was, because, like, I grabbed this Bigfoot pamphlet we're going to get into here in a little bit, and it was on the same shelf. And my brain went, Oh, why don't you bring it to the show? Show it off. And I was like, Wait a minute, bring it here and open it. I was like, No, that is like such a terrible, disrespectful, horrible idea to just do to anybody, you know? Yeah. Because then I realized, because then I remember what I said, you know, how I got the book and it was given to me and it had to be a choice and stuff like that. And the last we thing. We appreciate you not bringing it. Well, Thank the you last for thing, not bringing it. Well, the last thing I would want to do is expose you guys to anything like that just because it's like you guys Thank are you. what, you guys are what's considered like innocent bystanders in that situation, you know? If something's using, if something is, you know, using me as a conduit or using me as like an energy source or something like that. And then I give it a platform around you guys, you know, that's opening you guys up to that. And I'm not going to put your guys' spiritual health at safety. Thank you. You know, <laughs> we, we appreciate that. We, we probably put our spiritual health at risk. <laughs> anyway, anyway, well, the, you guys don't need a little push to the edge anymore for me. No, I we guess. don't. We, d- we do it just fine on our own. So the thing in my house right now is really something that. Um, What's the knocking? We never got to the knocking. Oh, the knocking. The cliffhanger, dude. It's I'm in, I'm in like. What's the well, knocking? there was nobody there, and then I went to Donna's and I was like, "Hey, did you knock on my door?" And she was like, "No." Was it like below? Was it above? She said, "Was it, it where j- the book was?" She said it just sounded like it was coming from the back door area. So like she was in the living room, and then like here's the back door. So there's like a kitchen to get through there, and like a little hallway area. But she's like, it sounded like a knock, but it sounded like some something was knocking that didn't know how to knock. But, like, Ugh. it knew what, like, a knock was because, like, you know. That's so horrible. Well, so, like, think about, like, if you were to, like, just, you know, like, what's your go-to knock? You know, you just go, like. Yeah. To, like, knock. But, like, she said it just. I have different knocks. I have a few different ones. Yeah, you know, you got to give him the old shave and a haircut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bits, I've done know? that one before. <laughs> um, give him the eye of the tiger. The da, 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 da. Da, Sometimes da, I da. just go with the straight up police knock. The bum, 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 bum. Oh, that one's so scary! I know. <laughs> Don't ever come to my house. No. Um, I do a two knock. I'm a two knock guy. Oh, real? Just yep. What like, about you? What do you do? I think I'm a three knock guy. Just real. Mm-hmm. It's you know, it's it's not personal. It's not business. It's just your standard knock. The yeah. third knock is me opening the door. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's usually like one of my kids. I'm like, hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> that's the, that's that dad knock. That's a dad knock. That's I dad knock. Oh, I have a dad yeah. knock. That's a dad knock. Um, yeah, dad knock is definitely always two, isn't it's it? It's two, and then you just come in. Then you open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't wait for anyone to say anything or like. No, you don't give them that point. No, five you're just like to get anything you're waiting together. To, you find something. Yeah. Um, but she said it just kind of sounded like I didn't hear it, so this is just kind of like how I interpreted what she heard. She's like, it just sounded like slightly off beat. So like where somebody might be like, it was like. But she said, but like, there's also been some noises kind of happening around the apartment that are also kind of like that, where it's like you can, I hear them coming from an area, but I can't pinpoint where the area is. Um, Tell us some stories. So when I texted you, these, yeah, these, what was going on with that? These are all the most recent ones. Um, so I was sitting at home, and uh, so the way my my AC unit was out for a little bit, so I had like my mattress in the living room, and I was just kind of like camping out there because I had the window unit in, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, like, here's, here's, like, me. Here's my setup. And then, like, uh, here's, like, the front window. And I have, like, these two window hangers for my cats to sit in. Um, and from the window, I hear this music. And it's, it sounded like it was, like, right next to the house. And, like, it sounds kind of goofy. But the way I'm going to describe it is kind of like ice cream truck music. Like, that kind of, like, do 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 Oh, my doo-doo. gosh. But, like, picture just, like, a really loud, like, two seconds of it. Just, like, do 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 and then uh, my cat that was in the window hopped down, and she's 
she's not as vocal as the other one, but she can be. And she was like, wee, wee. And like, literally, and she's not like a lap cat, like she can be, but she's yeah. not like a super lap cat. Literally came over, sat right next to me, and she does this thing and has done this thing ever since I got her back in September, where she'll just be sitting out in the living room and then she's just like, staring at the ceiling. But then follows something with her head. Oh. And so it's, but the other cat doesn't do it. And it freaks me out because I'm like, what are you seeing that, like, you don't want to know? Like, I, I want to know. Man, though. maybe you do. Well, because, and, and maybe this is just me and my belief system, you know, like, I'm, I'm the man of the house. Like, it's my house. It's not anything that can come in there's house. It's my house. You know, that's why I do, like, the cleansing rituals and, like, speak to the house and stuff like that because it's like, I'm not, nothing's going to come in here and bully me. You know, like, if you want to come in here and, like, hang around and, like, be spooky or something like that, like, that's fine. But, like, you're not going to rule me. You're not going to rule my life. You don't rule this home. Yeah. You know? And so uh, the cat hopped down and then, like, behind, (laughs) this is the part that got me because, like, and I swear, son of a bitch, I think some of this stuff might be because I was on the show last time talking about it. Um, I did have nightmares that night. Did you really? I did. Uh, But, like, I think it was, like, I think... Like, whatever's in the house knew I was, like, talking about the spiritual stuff with you guys. And yeah. it's like, okay, let's have some fun now. Um, <laughs> because the music happened. The cat came over by me. And then from behind me, it just sounded like a weird low laugh. Like, it was just kind of like – or, like, if it was a laugh, it was something imitating a laugh. Because, like, I'm going to try to – like, I'm trying to figure out how, like, how like it sounds. skinwalker laugh? Uh, you know what? We can maybe call it that. But, like, picture, like, if you were to, like, drag, like, that can across, like, like the bare counter, and it's like that. <laughs> like, it was like that. But, like, it didn't sound like a scraping, but it sounded like something going, like. <laughs> and so, like, so like here's me. I got to quit. Here's me. Here, I know. I'm getting chills talking about it. I was there. <laughs> it was real was, to me. I was there. <laughs> it was real to me, damn it. Um, but so, like, I'm sitting here holding my cat, and then it's, like, here. Like, if I could place it, it's, like, right behind me, and it's just. And, like, I suddenly had that, like, I'm going to turn around and swing on whatever this thing is. Yeah. But I was like, how am I going to turn around and swing around when the only thing behind me is a coffee table right up next to a wall? Like, there's not something there. Yeah. Like, and, uh, like, I literally, I texted you about it yeah. immediately. <laughs> yeah. In- because I was like, this, I was like, because my brain was like, oh, text my girlfriend about this. Ah, she's not going to get it. I'm going to text. I'm going to text my buddy Raph. And, so, <laughs> and then you didn't respond right away. So I called her and I was like, honey, there's some weird shit happening I'm sorry. Happening I'm right sorry. I, did, I did see it, though. Buddy, Ed is not on you. But, like, I, in that moment, I was like, I got to talk to a human being right now. And I called her and she's like, what was it? And I'm like, and I, I was like, hi, something weird's happening. And she goes, what happened? I go, actually, I don't want to tell you. It's just going to freak you out. And then I just, like, hung up the phone because, like, <laughs> like, like, well, because, like, if, if I tell her that stuff, she, like, thinks about it way too much. Oh, and yeah. Then she, like, thinks about it when yeah. she's there. And I'm like, well, that's how my you, wife's like that, too. That's how you make an act up is when you think about it when you're there. You know, you got to yeah. because, like, the best way to, like, if you're if anybody's experiencing this kind of stuff in their life, the best thing to do is just either, like, have fun with it or, like, ignore it. And then, like, if it is trying to scare you or, like, affect you like that, it's going to go away. Because the biggest thing you got to remember about this stuff is, like, so me, like, I'm delving really deep into the dark arts. Like, I'm basically asking for it. But, like, if you got stuff in your house that's, like, scaring you or, like, freaking you out and stuff like that, you basically just got to be like, look, it's my house. Like, you can come hang out here, like, if you're cool. But, like, if you're going to, like, be an asshole, you have to leave, you know? And I say it just like that all the time. Like, I talk, I'm, I don't, like, command this great authority over my house. But I'm just like, look, if you're, coo- if you're here, you can be cool. You can hang out, like... I don't know, like, what I attract about things. I don't know if they just need a rest station for a while to come hang out. And sometimes they're weird and I don't understand them. But I'm like, if you're good, you can stay. If you're bad, you got to go. And that's the rule in my house, you know. (laughs) So that's what makes me wonder sometimes if, like, the thing that I'm dealing with isn't necessarily bad. But the way it's trying to communicate with me is flawed. But that's why, like, it's it's so interesting because it's like I, I, I was messing with the Lesser Key of Solomon. This thing starts getting really prominently heavy in my house. But then, in a way, it almost reminds me of what I went through as a kid because it's like there's all these things happening to me that really scared me. Yeah. But it wasn't like I don't – it didn't always feel malicious. Like, sometimes I get this feeling that, like, something or some things, possibly the things I saw when I was on DMT or a connection to there or the things I saw when I had that mushroom trip in the hot tub – 
that it's like maybe something is trying to communicate with me, but the way it communicates isn't accepted well on this plane. Or the way it communicates, it just can't in this plane. And the way it's doing things is just coming across as very frightening and scary to me because I don't understand what it is. And it's just doing these weird things. But it, so like, like picture like you're making a phone call and it's really staticky and only like 2% of your words are getting through. So your friends are just hearing like, yeah. Ah. Oh, it. So what if like these weird things that are happening to me are just those little blips of conversation? So this thing's trying to tell me something. It's trying to be around me. It's trying to do something. But the way it's coming across is ineffective. Because how many times do we in our personal lives find ourselves being ineffective communicators, trying to communicate a larger idea or something to people that don't communicate the same way that we do? Oh, yeah. That's like speaking two different languages. Right. So and I mean, like, think about the things we deal with in our reality, just with like different cultures and different languages. And not just that. Look at the United States of America, how many different dialects and inflections and ways of talking that we have that like you can go to like, you know, rural Appalachia and you can not understand how some people are talking and it's right, literally absolutely. hundreds of miles from your front door. You know, so like what what what's to say that there isn't like, you know, beings that are greater than us, like spiritually, like these, you know, artists that are working on these reality projects and stuff like that. And maybe sometimes when we get these, you know, these visions, these dreams, these 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 supernatural experiences, stuff like that. What if it's just something that's trying to communicate with us, but doesn't have the tools to do so? For me. Personally, I would not want to communicate with it. To me, why I, is that? Why would I do that? Because I think that if you were getting a message from something good, like if it was from God mm -hmm. and He would present Himself clearly, there would be no mystery to it. There would be no trouble, ex like saying saying what needs to be said. Mm -hmm. To me. Just in some of the, like, the stories I've heard and people personally, I think that some of this stuff wants to come in innocently to get a better hold on you to trust it. Because, I mean, if God wants to communicate with you, he communicates with you. Right. You know, there's no, you know, like, if an angel would show up, it would be like, hey, don't be afraid. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, I'm something fearfully fearful to look at. Right. So don't be afraid. I'm here to, like, tell you something good. I feel like with God, it's clear. And I feel with, like... Sorry, I'm going to use a Christian word here. The enemy. No, please. You know, Satan, the devil, whoever. But, like, I would say that it would be trying trying to, like, ease its way in to get you to trust that it's something not malevolent. Okay. And then once it's got a hold, then it would show you. And just because of, I mean, especially with what you have in your house, especially mm -hmm. with some of the things you've dabbled with. Yeah. Like, because it takes a long time to figure that out.